Hello everyone, this is Brain's Journey and welcome back to another video in our functions series. In the last video we went over the ego functions, the base and creative, and today we're here with the super ego functions, um, the role and the polar, and soon you'll see that the super ego functions are quite different from the ego functions. They occupy quite a different role. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. We should be done with this series pretty soon. There's only four videos to make and then a few on the functional dichotomies. Um, and then we should be moving on to our next series about the Jungian dichotomies, actual type dichotomies. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. First off, we want to look at the role function. Now I had this diagram here like the last time. Um, this is how it's laid out in the model. The third function is over here and the fourth function is over here. So if you can picture like a one, two, three, four, you know, in a ring, um, that's on purpose. But obviously the way I'm describing it, they're on opposite sides, just arrows letting you know that. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the role function. What does the role function do? Well, it's repressed. It's, it's not something that we like to do. It's not something that we generally enjoy. Um, and it's viewed as a personal weakness. Um, the role is similar to taking out the trash. Um, you don't want to do it. Um, but, it, but it's pretty easy and you can do it whenever. You just don't feel like doing it. You know, you don't get any personal satisfaction out of it, but it's not that bad, you know, relatively speaking. So it's repressed, viewed as a weakness, something that we need to overcome in order to get going in our lives. You know, obviously you have to tend to personal chores. The role is like a personal chore, um, something that you have to tend to in order to, you know, have a stable life, but not something that you always want to tend to. So it tends to be viewed as a, a weak point. Um, development of the role function is like patching a leak. You know, leaks pop up sporadically, you can fix them in the moment. Um, you can get on top of the issues, like if you're having issues with leaks, um, you can repair all the leaks, but obviously if you wait too long, you're gonna end up with more leaks um, if you're not vigilant in, you know, scouting for problem areas. That's how the role tends to go. So it tends to be a problem area if you don't focus on it, um, but it does require effort and concentration to focus on it, so most people aren't 100% attentive to it. Um, it is irritated at criticism. You know, you don't like to receive criticism here because you're already aware that you're bad at it, basically. Um, if somebody says, hey, you're shit at your role function, yes, I know that I'm shit at my role function. It seems like common knowledge. It's something that you've already tried and failed to master, so receiving criticism for it is is something that is generally undesirable something that we only tend to accept from close personal friends who can help us with obviously our close personal lives um, it has theoretical value you know we think in our heads okay the role function is something that I should be doing but am not doing um, something that you would say to yourself well I better do that one thing so that I can, you know, make my life stable, but then when we actually go out and do it, it's not very enjoyable. Um, so it is situational. We use it depending on when we need to use it, not when we want to use it, because we don't want to use it. Um, and then the last point that I wanted to talk about with the role function is that it is an area of self-development. It is perceived as an area that we need to focus on, an area that we need to get better at, uh, but not something that we're always willing to put the most effort in into in any way. Um, so yeah, that's basically the role function is something that we don't enjoy, but something that we have to take care of anyhow. Um, how about the polar function? What's up with the polar function? Now the polar function is quite different. You might see it also called, oh, well, I might as well explain what polar stands for. Polar stands for point of least resistance. So you can already get an idea of what this function is all about. Um, it's also called the vulnerable or the painful function. You know, not very good names. You're not gonna expect something good out of this function. Um, and you'd be right about that because it is an area of frustration and inadequacy. We do not like to use this function. It is something that we avoid generally at all costs unless it is absolutely necessary to use it um, because we are very weak here and it, information processed in this function is often very difficult to comprehend. Um, so when we start to use it and we, you know, are not doing very good, it, that can tend to create frustration. Um, it causes insecurity and distress because we're not good at it. The role is something that we can generally manage. You know, we don't like to do it, but we do it anyway. The polar is something that we have to do, but we can't really do it. Um, so, it so it tends to cause distress when we're expected to conform to some kind of need to do the polar function. Um, 
it's usually ignored. It's normally something that we repress, that we don't even try to think about, um, that, that we don't even consciously process. Obviously, those that are more experienced in the theory who know about their polar function are aware of this weakness. They, they've you know, started thinking about why this function is the way that it is. But even with an awareness and kind of an intellectual comprehension of why we need to use this function, it still tends to be something that is very difficult to translate into stable norms of behavior. Um, we're t we have a tendency, even when we're aware of it, to do the minimal to satisfy this function, to do what's absolutely necessary and nothing beyond that. Um, because maybe we might understand it in an intellectual sense, but we are not experientially doing anything about it, so you could say. Um, the development of the polar function is more or less cursory. The role can get worked on, you know, it can be kind of patched up, like, you know, that I made the leaks analogy, um, but the polar function, that's why I put development in quotes, because you're not, it's very difficult. Um, development of the polar function is often equivalent to recognizing its importance in our daily life, so that when we get struck with a situation where we have to use it, we can kind of go inside our head and go, okay, this is my weak point, I better do what I do to just get it over with, get this problem solved. Um, so often we don't hone our skills necessarily with this function, but we can recognize its importance. And that is generally what development we can use with the polar function. Um, so in general, just a bad area, just an area that we don't want to focus on. Um, we can do it, but it's very weak. It will often cause us problems. Um, and if it's not properly executed, that can have consequences, um, as we're going to get into in a minute. Um, so we've gone over the role and the polar functions. Now let's combine those two into a group. This group is called the superego. I'm probably going to say every single video um, because I know that some people will go after me. I know a few specific people that I'm not going to say here that will go after this terminology. Um, it is not correlated with Freud's psychoanalytic theory or Jung's psychoanalytic theory. These are just concepts that portray the main kind of idea of what this block represents. Um, so we have the superego. What does the superego do? Well, it is focused on the stressful fulfillment of norms and standards. These are things that we believe we have to manage, um, but things that we really don't want to manage. It causes stress. It, we go, oh, well, I have to do this again. You know, it's like a here we go again kind of function grouping. Um, and so we don't, we really don't want to pay attention to this, but it's, we're always forced to pay attention in some way or another. Um, we're always aware of our weaknesses in this area. This isn't something that we can just forget about. Perhaps the polar can be ignored, but it couldn't be forgotten about. Um, something that we're always presented with, that we always have to, you know, deal with as in our daily lives. Um, so, so we are aware of our weaknesses here and we don't tend to do much about it for the most part. Um, it absorbs info to deal with issues. We often don't trust our own ability to solve problems in these areas, especially heavy problems. Um, so if we can absorb info related to these functions and use it to apply to our daily lives, then we will. If we can receive advice, um, we often don't like to receive advice from a stranger you know, with these functions, but somebody close and personal who has skill with these functions can provide us with some guidance, can provide us with you know, some proper, you know, teachings. How do you do this? What are some strategies for this? So just so that you can get out of the way. You don't want to, de generally, development is just so that you can eliminate the issues. For the ego, development is more about how can I expand this in the best way possible, expand these areas. For the superego, you generally seek development just to prevent problem areas for ar from arising. Um, and then the last point that I wanted to talk about was this is just a block of social conformism. If somebody tells you, you have to do these things, there's really not much you can do to say no, um, other than try to fight back. Um, like, the, especially the polar is something that we're always aware of, something that we don't do properly, and that is made manifest in a lot of different areas. So we tend to just conform to what's best according to these areas, and I'll go into that more when we talk about the, um, the Jungian dichotomies and the types as well. So, we went over the superego, the role function, the polar function, and the blocking. Um, next video will be on the superid functions, suggestive and mobilizing. So, 
If you enjoyed the video, put a like on it. If you have any observations, criticisms, concerns, questions, you can leave them in the comments below. And if you're thinking about seeing more material in the future, because we've got a lot of stuff coming, um, you can hit that subscribe button for more content. Um, so yes, I will see you all in the next lecture.